Today I'm going to talk to you about tsconfig, which I know could be sort of a scary configuration file with thousands of combinations of cryptic options and whatnot, but I think we can decipher a few of them together, and this might turn into a multi-part series, but for now let's look at a few of the basic ones, and I think it'll help make this make sense. So if you were to set up a fresh new project, you'd probably start out doing npm init. And so here you can see that it has my main set as index.js, but of course we wanna make this a TypeScript project, so I'm going to remove my index file here and we'll change a few things around. So in order to make this a TypeScript project, what we want to do is we wanna say npm install dash dash save dev TypeScript. And then we wanna run tsc init and in your case, you might put npx in front of it, but in the way that I have my path set up, I don't need to add that. And here you can see it created a new tsconfig JSON with the following things. And it gives us a link here to learn more, which is really cool. But as soon as you go to that link, you're like, what are all these like thousands and thousands and thousands of options? And it can seem pretty overwhelming. But let's take a look at what the default TS config looks like. So here you can see there's a bunch of comments, which I think are intended to be pretty helpful, but I'm going to kind of clear those out for the moment. So here, if we clear all of this out, you can see that what we are actually left with is about a half dozen options here. And there is an explanation for each one of these. So here you can see... This will set the JavaScript language version for emitted JavaScript, and this will make sense as we get into the idea of type checking versus emitting or compilation. And then here you can see this specify which module code is generated, which is not the most helpful description of this, so we'll get into this shortly as well. And then you can see this is probably a very poor description of this, but uh, the description here is that it will emit additional JavaScript to ease support for importing CommonJS modules. And then we have force consistent casing and file names. This you can think of more as like a linting tool, but I think that's helpful. And then strict true. This is really important. There was a time where this was not the default out of the box. This enables a bunch of different strictness options. Uh, however, there's one that this does not include, which we'll get to in a moment. And then here you can see we have skip libcheck, which typically turning this on helps when you're getting weird errors because TypeScript is checking library code deep within your node modules folder. So th this is a pretty decent set of d defaults, but there is one really important missing strictness rule here, which is not included in strict true, and it's called no unchecked index access. You should absolutely turn this to true. In fact, if there are only two rules that you have in your entire TS config file, it should be these two strict and no unchecked index access. These are the most important things. And why do I say that? I mean, one of the most important things TypeScript does is enforce a level of strictness on your code at the type checking level, as well as helping you with suggestions and not making mistakes, as well as null safety. So obviously strictness rules are very important for TypeScript to do its job. And we'll get into what this rule is and why it's important shortly. But let's kind of go back to what we had here. And we'll look at these rules and specifically what they do. Since there's two fundamental things that TypeScript does for you, at least at the TSC level, it will check your code, so you can think of it as the TypeScript checker, and it will also compile your code, so you can think of it as, you can think of TSC as meaning TypeScript compiler. And many modern projects actually don't use TSC to do the compilation step because there are faster tools out there. So the two things TypeScript's tooling does for you, which is checking your code and compiling your code, it's important to keep those two roles in mind as we look at these rules. So for example, in the case of target here, this is specific to the compilation output, meaning whenever we compile your code, or I guess transpile your code from TypeScript to JavaScript, what is the target, what version of output should we produce? And in this case, it looks like the default is ES2016, which is a reasonable default, but you'll often see folks bump this to ES next, which basically means the current or most recent version of ECMAScript, which ECMAScript you can think of for this purpose as being synonymous with JavaScript. And then similarly here, the module, meaning what sort of module output should we produce? And again, if you're using a bundler like Parcel or Webpack, there may be reasons why you need to output a particular type of module. In fact, 
uh, if you're using a bundle, you almost certainly want to output ES next. Or if you're using Node, you may either want CommonJS or you may want Node next. So for now, I'm going to leave this as ES next. Uh, ES module interop, I'm going to sort of leave that alone for now, but that has to do with if your project is set to use modern ES modules with import and you're importing something from the older style common JS. But I'm going to leave that alone for now. Force consistent casing and file names isn't really important for this video or for what we're going through. And then, of course, as I mentioned, these are the two strict rules that we want to talk about. All right, so let's now create a file. I'll call it main.ts. So here I'll just console.log hello world. And we'll save it. I will jump over to my command line here and I'll run TSC. And so that has run with no output at all. And if we jump back over here, you can see that it created a file called main.js and it converted or so-called compiled our TypeScript here to JavaScript. And there wasn't really much to compile or change or strip away, but you will see that it added one thing, which is use strict. And that isn't necessary in modern ES6, so we can use a setting to turn that off. But for now, I just wanted to kind of establish that when we run TSC, by default, it will both check our code and compile or transpile our code. So one thing I can do is I can give it an out directory. And this can be something like the lib directory here. And so now if I remove the file that was just created, and I run TSE again, it will instead put the compiled output in the lib directory. Now you might call it build, you might call it lib. Typically the way I see it done is we have a folder called SRC and we would put our main.ts in our SRC and then the output would go in lib and it would kind of mirror our SRC or our source directory. That's a pattern that I've seen. It's by no means universal, but in this case, what I'll do is I can now specify include here and I can include only the files in the source directory. And so if I run this again now, let's clear this out. In fact, to make this a little easier, what I might do is I'll jump into my package JSON here and I'll go into my scripts. I'll make a script called clean and I'll say rmrf lib. So this will clean up any of the build output that we had previously. So here I can run npm run clean and that should and that should remove our lib directory perfect and then so so now i can run tsc and again it will recreate that lib directory here and you can see that that will now mirror what's in our source directory now the last thing to do in terms of file inclusion is that here we had previously specified or the default for npm when it initialized our package json was to specify the index.js so here i'll just change that to lib slash main.js and in your case that might be something different right okay and so the next thing i'll show you is that we can run tsc-w for watch and here you can see that it started compilation in watch mode so the first thing I can do is I can actually write some TypeScript. So if I save that, you can see it automatically updated main.js in my lib folder with the compilation output. And you can see that was because we were running in watch mode. So there was a change detected. So it started an incremental compilation. So we could now run that. And you can see we get exactly what we expected. So that's kind of your very basic setup, at least if you're running your JavaScript in Node, that's a very basic setup of tsconfig. But what we haven't done is really explored what are all these options. So for example, I added out directory here, that's probably pretty self-explanatory. I added include, which is not entirely necessary. TypeScript is pretty smart about figuring out which files need to be included. But to be explicit here, I've said, okay, this is where my source files are going to be, and then this is the output directory, which will sort of mirror that source directory. So I mentioned strict here and no unchecked index access. And I think these are the two strict rules that you really need to care about. Strict turns on almost everything you need, except for this one, which you absolutely should turn on. I think any project that does not have this turned on is asking for runtime exceptions. So what does that mean? 
Well, strict mode enforces that you can't pass null for values. So without strict mode, you can do a lot of really bad things. So here, for example, I could pass null in. And so you can see there's no error here. I, I can pass null in even though it's expecting a number. And so that would be really bad. In fact, turning on strict does enable null safety for the most part, but not in all cases. So here I'm going to turn strict back on, but I'm going to temporarily remove the unchecked index access. And here you can see we did get the error when I passed null here. So what did I have before? Five. And so that error has gone away. However, uh, it, it doesn't really give us as much null safety as we'd probably expect from a strict typing system. So for example here, I can say const numbers, which is an array of number. So here I'll create an empty array that I'm declaring here is going to be an array of numbers, even though it doesn't have any numbers in it at the moment. Now what happens now if I say, all right, well, I want to add three to the first number in the array. So here I'll say numbers at index zero. So you'll see there's no complaint here, even though we can look at this and be like, whoa, that, that first number there may or may not exist. In fact, like, you know, in this code, it doesn't exist at all. And that would be bad. This, this would definitely not do, this is not at all what the programmer intended. Uh, in fact, especially if in here, if we were doing things to the numbers, like let's say calling a method on it, I mean, this is a silly method to call, but if we were calling methods in the add function on our numbers because we're expecting them to be a number because we have been very clear to TypeScript that it should be a number, you'll see that there's no error here because TypeScript says, oh, well, look, you know, this is close enough. There probably will be numbers in this array. Uh, and, and that is very not strict. So that's why I always go out of my way to make sure we turn on this additional strictness rule been in the language for a few years. I think it's super important to have this on. So now you can see that I cannot pass something out of this array because there's no way for TypeScript to know if that number does exist in that array or not. So we would have to either provide a fallback here like this, or we'd have to in some other way make sure that this is a number. So this is not legit. There may or may not be a number at that index, depending on what this array contains. All TypeScript knows, at least from what we told it, is that this array does contain numbers, but TypeScript doesn't know how many numbers. So it is important to turn on this strictness rule. Okay, so there are a bunch of strictness rules. These are the two you need to care about. And an interesting distinction here is that, you know, we said that TSC kind of serves two roles here. It serves the role of compiling your code, but also in checking your code. And you can see here that the checker is kind of built into our editor, or at least if we're using VS Code and most other editors that kind of have that integration in there. And then the compiler we have to run separately. So that's what we run here in the command line. Although typically you, you probably wouldn't run TSC in the way that we've done it here. You'd probably run TSC as part of your build step or whatever package or like Webpack or Vite or whatever tooling you're using. And so you almost certainly would not be running this in watch mode in the background. This just makes it easy for a demo like this. And so most of what you're doing is letting your editor check your code as you're typing it, which is where, uh, you know, these sort of rules affect how TypeScript checks your code. And then the other rules like uh, out directory here and include these affect how TypeScript compiles your code. In fact, target and module here also affect how uh, TypeScript outputs your code. So if we look at, for example, so let's say I had written this function differently. Instead of using the function keyword here, I've said const add equals. You can see we've used the kind of more modern arrow syntax. If if I open up what is the output of that, uh, you can see that it hasn't really changed that, right? I mean, again, it's added this annoying use strict, which isn't really necessary for modern JavaScript runtimes. Anyway, we'll leave that alone for now. So again, target is ESNext, module is ESNext, and what you can see here is that this arrow function here got converted to this arrow function here, which are equivalent. The only difference is that we don't have type annotations. So you can see the compiler stripped away these type annotations as it should, because JavaScript cannot understand TypeScript syntax, and this, of course, is TypeScript syntax. Okay, but let's say for a moment that we're targeting a much older browser, which doesn't support arrow functions. We can now change the target here to an older version, such as ES5, which you'll see surprisingly often in the real world. And now if we flip back over here, 
you can see that it has now converted that to the older syntax of using a function, like the word function here, instead of an arrow function. So I think it's important to note that if you're using a different tool for compiling your TypeScript, things like target and module don't really have an impact. Although module might still be important for some type checking around importing and exporting, but generally speaking, these rules are for when it's outputting JavaScript from your TypeScript. So this is about what we're outputting, but there's another interesting thing, which is about what we're allowed to use within our TypeScript. So there's a rule called lib. And so here you can specify which particular of the built-in libraries, which you want to support. And so again, I'm going to say ES next here. And what that means is I want to use all the new features of modern JavaScript. So what does that mean? Well, let's think of a new feature. In fact, let me remove this for a moment and let's think of a cool new feature in JavaScript, which is starts with. So here we might have a function called is hex color. We're just going to return if input dot starts with if it starts with the hash. But what you can see here is that TypeScript will not let us use starts with. So TypeScript will generally let you use modern JavaScript features and then compile them down to older JavaScript, which we saw earlier, right? We used an arrow function, which is nice modern JavaScript. And then TypeScript compiled that down to ES5, like to older JavaScript. However, here's where that is not the case. So whenever I'm calling methods on things, right, those methods do need to exist. TypeScript will not compile this to some magic code that will, you know, kind of polyfill the starts with method. It will really try to only compile syntax changes and it will leave methods the way they are, meaning that we have to tell TypeScript, well, what are the methods that we expect to exist in our JavaScript runtime? And that can be dependent on Okay, are we targeting like a modern version of Node or are we targeting a browser? And if so, which version? And for, for example, we might be targeting browsers but also have polyfills like Core.js and sold, which would go in and, and provide these methods that otherwise wouldn't be available. Or we might be in environments like React Native and we might be targeting older versions of React Native that don't have certain methods. So we, so it's on us, the programmer, to tell TypeScript, okay, what do we expect to exist in the environment that we're ultimately going to be running this code in. And so here, there's a ton of options. And so here you can see, um, we have a bunch of DOM stuff. We have web worker is an example. We have a bunch of DOM things. So uh, if we're in the browser, obviously we expect certain globals to be, to be available like console.log, right? And so that is something that we do expect to exist. If we don't put DOM in there, then uh, console doesn't exist. So if we say, okay, we're going to be running in the context of the browser, then TypeScript will know, or, or at least will make the assumption that certain globals exist, right? And there's a bunch of browser specific globals besides console. Obviously there's things like, you know, document, create element, things like that. Like these all exist. And the autocomplete here can help us with those because we've specified that we're going to be running in the browser by adding DOM there. And then of course we can specify, okay, well, what about like built-in JavaScript stuff? So like, are we using ES 2015, which has a bunch of particular methods in it, or are we using ES, I guess it goes all the way up to ES 2022, which contains a bunch of new array methods and internationalization things. So if we're using ES 2022, which is the latest release, we get a bunch, we get a bunch of new things. And one of those new things, by the way, is array.at. So I don't know if I make an array here by let's saying splits. You can see we have array.at, so we can say array.at zero. This doesn't make a whole lot of sense in this particular function, but here you can see I'm allowed to use .at because I set this to ES2022, but if I change it back to 2021, you can see at doesn't exist on arrays as a method. And here in ES2021, we don't have .at, and in ES2022, we do. Now, if you don't want to bump this every year, you, you can just say ES next, and it's basically saying, look, let me use whatever the latest is that you know about right now, TypeScript, and um, that, of course, evolves and changes over time. And so here you can see that we can use dot .at. So again, we have certain configuration options that are specific to the compilation step and others that are specific to type checking. And this is one of those that is specific to type checking. This is saying, okay, this is the execution environment that we expect for this code to run in, you know, in production and let me use the methods and globals that are available in that execution environment. So what other things do we care about? I think the last thing that I want to talk about, at least in this video, is module. And this 
kind of opens a can of worms. In fact, I should probably do a whole video on modules. But let's briefly just look at, okay, well, what happens if I want to take this is hex color function and I want to factor that out into its own file? And so I'll paste that in here. Of course, now I have to export it. And I'll jump over here and I'll import it. So here I'll say import from, you can see I get my autocomplete here from is hex color. Here I'll use it and I'll say, okay, well, let's console.log is hex color that it should console.log false. But let's quickly look at what was output here. So if we look at our lib directory here, you can see now I have main. And because I set the module config option here to use ES next over here, you can see it did not change my import at all. It didn't change it to a require or it didn't compile that to some other syntax. It left it intact. In fact, if we look at main.ts and main.js, they are identical. And you'll also notice that it took away the use strict at the top. And that's because now we've implicitly switched to module mode. But that's not all that interesting. I think what's more interesting is if we switch module here to a different value. Probably the most common other option that you would see, no pun intended, is common JS. And this is a pseudo standard that was invented by the node folks many, many years ago. And here, if we look at the compiled output of this same thing, if we go over to main here, you can see that it's done a bunch of magic here. So for one thing, it added this kind of, it used define property here to add this ES module property on some global gold exports, and it had the value true to that. Uh, and then it created this like temporary variable and it used, it converted our import statement to a require. And then what might be the weirdest about this is that instead of directly accessing is hex color underscore one dot is hex color, it's instead wrapped it in parentheses and put zero comma, which is a hacky way to make sure that we don't accidentally get the this context of the object that we're calling the property on or the method on. But I realize that is probably more complex than we need to dive in here. So suffice it to say that this is just a, a weird behavior of when we compile from modern ES modules here to common JS, it does a bunch of hacky stuff. So that's the takeaway there. All right, I think that kind of covers the basics of compiler options. Like I said, I'll probably end up doing additional videos on this, but I hope you learned something here. At least I hope you understand some of the differences between options that change the compilation output versus options that change the type checking behavior. If you like this sort of content, stick around and I'll make more videos like this. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.